Hello. Can you all hear me? Hello. Hello all, um, welcome to the lightning talk on democratizing the discourse on data rights, experience sharing from rural India. I'm Jenny, I work as a researcher with Digital Empowerment Foundation. Uh, I'll give a brief uh, description of what Digital Empowerment Foundation is. With the motto to inform, communicate and empower, Digital Empowerment Foundation has been working on bridging the digital divide in under underserved and unreached regions and communities. Since our inception in 2002, our focus area areas have also evolved. So initially we focused on connecting the unconnected, uh, setting up internet services, uh, and building the infrastructure for internet connectivity. Uh, however, uh, when, uh, you know, Eventually, we also started working among the underconnected people that even when people are connected, they did not have access to welfare services and uh, meaningful access to internet. Over the time, we have also been uh, uh, focusing on the communities who are hyper-focused, the issues of misinformation, disinformation, data justice, etc. So we are virtually joined by uh, Mr. Osama Mansur, Director of the Digital Empowerment Foundation. Osama has more than 25 years of experience working in rural, unconnected India. He has co-authored more than six books, including Internet Economy of India and Net Chakra. Uh, we are also joined by Vinita Venugobal, my colleague, who is a consultant researcher at Digital Empowerment Foundation. Uh, Vinita will be speaking now. 
uh, Vinita, uh, can you talk about how uh, DEF is approaching the issue of data rights for rural communities and the context that led to the programs addressing this issue? The floor is yours. One second, you're not audible. One second. Can you try speaking once? Okay, it's a technical issue from their side. They're fixing it. Okay. Uh, should we wait some, uh, have you informed them? Shall we wait some two to three minutes then? No, no, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Okay. So as I was saying, we realized that while there is a lot of discussion happening on data rights, but among businesses, uh, scholars, activists, regulators, and policy makers, most of it was not reaching those who are most vulnerable especially the new digital entrance at the grassroots. It is in this context that we decided to initiate a data rights for communities program. Uh, let me uh, take you through uh, some instances of the data rights issue in India. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, is the loading uh, are you able to see it's loading digital iniquity less bandwidth in a rural area we can see it now <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so this news image shown here this is from the indian south indian state of karnataka where a pregnant migrant laborer from another state who did not have a birth certificate and as such could not obtain Aadhaar. It's a uh, cycle, cyclic process. Aadhaar is India's biometric based unified identification card was turned away leading to her death and that of the unborn baby. This was done in violation of a landmark judge by in, judgment by Indian Supreme Court in Puttaswami versus Union of India and Aadhaar Act. However, most of the citizenry are not aware that this is a violation and the departmental functionaries, they are either unaware or doesn't abide by this. The insistence for Aadhaar for nearly everything doesn't help the matters either. In other instances, medical practitioners have asked from a moralistic side, husband's Aadhaar details to adult women who approach them for medical termination of pregnancy, which is again illegal and violates privacy as well as right to self-determination. Well, while cannabis is illegal in India, the police officers have no right to demand that you hand over the phone or inspect its contents without judicial warrant. Otherwise, it can be done only during an investigation that you after recording sufficient reasons. However, most of the time police officers, they demand and people, even in metros, end up handing over their phone either due to ignorance or fear. This is the uh, recently ongoing case of the Karnataka water data theft case. Uh, in this case, personal information of the voters, including Aadhaar number, phone number and water ID number. It was uploaded on an app developed by the trust and not on the official app of the election commission. The NGO had no authorization to collect this information either. The opposition has currently accused the ruling party of using this data for targeted advertisement. 
well bank never asked for otp but cyber fraud especially otp fraud is rampant in india the real numbers could be much higher as a good number of cases go unregistered most often police officers don't register the cases and awareness and access to cyber crime online cyber crime reporting is limited so we uh, consider it is in the context of all this and many recurring issues that we designed our project uh, we designed our curriculum based on the fundamental data principle as per the uh, general data protection regulations drafted and passed by the european union as india's data protection regime is yet to be finalized Uh, this is the way we um, conducted the training. I wish uh, we could show you the uh, puppet show, but it is very long, and so we decided against including it. Um, we also conducted gender segregated and age segregated discussions to allow for more open conversation. With the help of our partner, Bear Food College, we conducted puppet shows as well. Overall, uh, we have so far conducted six rural and five urban locations. Uh, these were the level of understanding as per our, I mean, I would say 288 sample size. Um, there is good awareness about safeguarding privacy while using social media apps. Um, Uh, now, uh, Jenny, if you would like me to elaborate further on insights. Yes, you can go ahead and, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, these insights are from the sessions we've uh, conducted with the rural community in India. And we yeah. have done a participatory form of, uh, you know, research where we've asked them what are the issues which they are facing. So, if Vineda can take us through that. Rural as well as urban. Uh, we found that younger generation is more aware of the OTP related fraud. However, elderly generation lacking digital literacy and textual literacy often have to rely on others to access the government schemes including simple banking and financing due to the rampant digitization and gratification. This includes OTP sharing. Another challenge the elderly workers face is that faulty biometric machines not identifying their fingerprint, leading to deprivation of much needed rations. India's public food provisioning system currently mandates biometric identification for ration delivery. There is clear lack of consideration for elderly and digitally illiterate and how these systems are designed. Similarly, very often people are denied public services and benefits because of inaccurate data entered by the officials in the system. In a country with limited textual literacy and where data is often collected orally, often the right holders have to spend significant time and money to fix these errors. If they are daily wage laborers, they lose the wage of that day when they, go, when they have to undertake multiple visits to the government offices. Additionally, as you can see, OTP messages comes in English, again, forcing those who does not know English to rely on others. This problem was mainly reported by women. We also noticed that social control and moralistic concerns over the internet use of girls still persist, age-old story still going on. Many parents are reluctant to allow their girl children to access internet, while concern is much less where the boys are concerned. Moreover, the community members generally provide all information that's asked by the officials or those who claim to be representing the government as illustrated by the Karnataka water data theft case. So there is a need to sensitize both the community as well as the department in this regard. Department should also set data collection protocols to ensure only minimal data is collected by authorized personnel. There have been reported data leakage from lower level offices as well. Uh, like you are applying for a competition exam and after that you are getting calls from coaching centers. Hey, would you like to join our coaching center? Another concern raised was regarding the behavior of the non-profits organization, shamefully admitting, and journalists, not us, 
while they would explain the purpose of the visit they do not always ask consent before capturing images or videos the community members mentioned that they don't even know how their photos are being shared and represented it doesn't help that again linguistic issue that the stories are often written in english uh, these are some of the questions yeah okay you want to continue yes you have yes, three more minutes for, yes yeah. these are some of the questions the community members raised the questions for the state and central governments policy makers and social media platforms i leave it to you thanks vinita all right thank you vinita uh, for taking us through uh, you know the discussion which is happening on the ground because it's so different from what is the discussions happening in policy circle about you know privacy and uh, you know the issues of surveillance um, it shows you know how it is built on and embedded on the existing power relations uh, of a country that the people who are rural marginalized elderly they don't even know what digital technology is to even access um, you know the kind of programs built on uh, you know uh, you know digitized systems uh on that note we also have a short clip uh, on the issues faced by the rural workers enrolled under mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme uh pranita can you play the movie uh, yes janisha sure. तो क्या ये सारा सिस्टम भी ऐप के थ्रू ही होता है ऐप के थ्रू ही होता है ना और कोई चारा नहीं कोई चारा नहीं अभी मेज बंद है और पेमेंट नहीं आएगा तो खर्च कैसे करूंगा इनके पास जब मोबाइल है इनके पास जब मोबाइल है ऑफलाइन इनके पास मस्टोल है ऑफलाइन को ये भरते हैं तो वो सच्चे वहां काट देता है ये मगर 18 महीने तो बहुत ज्यादा है तो है ना पूछे ज्यादा घर खर्च कैसे चलाए दिस एंटायर एरिया हैज बीन डग अप and this band has been created and made not by jcb but by these nreg workers sachcha sarpanch mal gaya ho garib ka rupya khana mel banaya ho rakho satya na sajal jao garib ka rupya khana mel banaya and they have made their own union this is the only place where there is a unionization of rrg workers has taken place wo union ke dhaanche mein aane se kya hai ki phir hi zimmedari ban jati hai ki wo panchayat karyakarta inki meeting le panchayat karyakarta inka aavedan karwaye aavedan kara ke rasid le rasid nahi mile to struggle kare aur wahan pe ja ke dharne mein baith ke din bhar baitha phir bhi nahi mili to phir aur logo ko bula lete hain ki bhai ab aap aa jao yahan to de hi nahi rahe to us us pressure se ye rasid bhi dete bina kaam kiye jinko paisa de rahe hain और यहाँ वो काम करने के बाद एक एक इंच नापने लगते हैं तो हमने इनको कहा एक एक इंच खोजना पड़ेगा नहीं तो पैसा देंगे तो जब पूरा नाप हो गया तो आप पूरा पैसा लेंगे तो हम पूरा पैसा के लिए लड़ते हैं तो दो सौ इकतीस रूपए पूरा मिले तो ये एनआरई जी का यूनियन बना कितने महीने पहले या साल पहले तीन साल तीन साल हो गया तीन साल तीन साल हो गए बारह हजार मेंबर पांच डिस्ट्रिक्ट बारह हजार अभी है लेकिन पहले 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 साल में थोड़ा कम थे बड़े ऐसे लेकिन तीन साल के दायरे में हम इस लेवल पे आए हैं अब इसमें जो अगला बात है ये कि अब अब तक तो ये केवल नरेगा में पूरा काम पूरा दाम वाला और पैसा लेने वाला नरेगा को ढंग से चलाने वाला ही सीखे लेकिन हम हमारा ये भी नरेगा के नरेगा एक बहाना है यूनियन बनने के लिए उसके बाद आप बाकी चीजें सब कर सकते हो ना इनके साथ बात करो इनके साथ आप सरकार की बाकी योजनाओं को लिंक करो ऐसा भी है जो इस यूनियन से नाखुश है सरकार के जो कर्मचारी है सरपंच है ये तो खुश है क्योंकि उनको तो उनको उनको जबकि उनको खुश होना चाहिए कि उनके तो कोई काम ही नहीं कर रहा हम तो काम कर रहे हैं लेकिन वो कह रहे हैं कि ये यूनियन आज नरेगा में काम की बात कर रही है कल को ये सोशल ऑडिट की बात करेगी कल को ये यूनियनाइजेशन नहीं चाहते और साथ नहीं चाहते, नहीं चाहते। हाँ। एक आवाज नहीं चाहते एक आवाज बिल्कुल नहीं चाहते वो नहीं चाहते की ये लोग ये सीखे ये सब चीजें उनको इससे तो दिक्कत नहीं है लोग काम करके पूरा पैसा ले लेकिन उनको ये खतरा है की जिस दिन पंचायत में आके दूसरी सवाल पूछेगी 
लेकिन शंकर जी ये बताइए कि आप ऑनलाइन को कैसे आप पूरी तरह से मैंडेटरी कर सकते हो जब आपको पता है कि ना कनेक्टिविटी है ये बात कर रहे हो मैं आपको कह रहा हूँ ये तो पेपरलेस बनाने वाले हैं ये तो हार्ड कॉपी रखेंगे नहीं ये तो कह रहे हैं आप सब कुछ इसी से होगा हमारे यहाँ इस यूनियन की महिलाओं में से एक जब रैली चल रही थी कलेक्टर के यहाँ पे धरना वरना चल रहा था उसमें उसने कहा था उसने कहा था कि आप ये हमारे हाजिरी भरते हो हम मिट्टी खोदते हैं नरेगा में काम करते हो हमारी ऐप से हाजिरी भरते हो कि भाई ये आया कि नहीं आया तुमने पटवारी का भरा है क्या वो पटवारी पटवार करने में आता नहीं आता है उसका भी तो ये इसी से कर दो ना तनखा कि जिस दिन वो आया नहीं उसके एबसेंट लगाओ मास्टर कितने बजे आया वो लगाओ ना आप इसमें उनका भी यही करो सारा हिसाब जो है हाँ, सही लेना है हाँ, मजदूरों से ही लेना तो आप तहसीलदार पटवारी गिरदावर जो भी है आप सरकारी कर्मचारी सबका ऐसे ही कर दो ना या हमारा ही करोगे हम मिट्टी खोदने गए कि नहीं गए उसने ये कहा था उसने कहा करो तो उनका भी करो तो आपको क्या लगता है कि ये मतलब आपने एक सेंटेंस यूज किया था कि नरेगा अपनी मौत भी मर रहा है और ऊपर से प्रेशर भी है उसको मारने चारों तरफ से बात ये है कि एक एक तो करप्शन है और करप्शन का मतलब ये नहीं है कि करप्शन लोगों ने उसको चालू कर दिया लोगों को जब कुछ रास्ता ही नहीं नि, निकला तो जो ऊपर से चलाने वाला मॉनिटरिंग का वाला ढांचा है सरकार का उसने उसकी मॉनिटरिंग खत्म कर दी बंद कर दी तो अब उसके बाद में वो खुद जाके कभी जयन देखता नहीं आज आप साइड पे जाके आए कल जयन आके देखे तो उसको अगले को अंकुश रहेगा कि हम काम करें तो वो देखता नहीं है तो अब ढांचा धीरे धीरे ऐसे चल गया कि काम करो या मत करो पैसा तो उतना ही मिलना है वो अपने घर बैठे बैठे एम भर देता है ऐसे ही भर देता है हाँ चलो इतने इतना इतना देते उतना देते तो उस किस्म का जब सरकार का कुछ कुछ जवाबदेही मॉनिटरिंग खत्म हो जाएगा तो क्या है हम जवाबदेही कानून के लिए भी इसीलिए लड़ रहे हैं आप एक तरफ कहते हो आधार कार्ड किसी को मत बताओ आधार कार्ड के नंबर किसी को और मत बताओ अरे तो तुम तो ले रहे हो ना हमसे आपने तो सब कुछ लिया हमसे हमारा आधार कार्ड भी आपके पास है हमारी मेरे परिवार की पूरी जानकारी सरकार के पास है सरकार की पूरी जानकारी मेरे पास नहीं तो वो भी आना चाहिए ना थैंक यू प्रणेता आई वुड लाइक टू मूव टू असामा नाव सो आई एम श्योर दिस नरेगा इज वन एग्जाम्पल ओसामा इन योर एक्सपीरियंस यू नो वाट आर द अदर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ एक्सक्लूशन यू हैव कम अक्रॉस वॉट आर द कॉमन प्रॉब्लम्स कम्युनिटीज फेस एंड what are your recommendations to address these issues as a person who has worked uh, with the rural communities uh, for more than two decades yeah thanks jenny and uh, uh, we don't need, need this slide uh, uh, you rightly pointed out that uh, you know it's important to uh, look at the rural communities uh, from the perspective of recommendation and i think that is where the whole story it starts because when we make digital policies when we make uh, any policy digital and of course the data is the latest entry into the digital policy it is very important that you make the policy from the people's perspective and uh, uh, most of the people who live in rural areas and india's population to think of who are affected by connectivity by digital it is important that we understand their level of uh access to infrastructure which is digital infrastructure understand digital as a as a framework digital as a infrastructure digital as an access digital as a medium digital as a as a as an educational tool and so on and so forth third and the fourth is the public accountability of the government and i would say even for business these are the very strong point of developing mass scale policy because that's what policy is supposed to be about policy is not like making just business sense for some business people you know even though you want to serve with your business purpose to the masses so it's very important to understand the ecosystem the ecosystem of india is that more than 50 60% or even 70% people live in rural areas more than 50% people are not internet connected more than 70% people do not have meaningful internet connectivity and then 
your all policies are based on digital access or digital literacy or digital uh, ecosystem for example i am the laborer i am the poorest person i am the i am the person who is living uh, in rural area i don't have a mobile phone but you are asking me to make my present and i buy do you have a public access point where i can go into that but no you don't so it's very important that we can cannot have number one digital only policy if you make digital only policy which clearly means that you haven't talked to your own people whom you want to serve in the name of welfare services and so on and so forth so my recommendation is that whether it's data policy privacy policy uh, uh, digital infrastructure access you know uh, telecom bill everything is actually inclusive of thinking from the people's perspective that how do you incorporate digital policy it's very very important and 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 we have seen examples i mean these are millions of people who are part of the country who are part of your population who are part of your legal citizens who are working on the ground we are asking for their accountability but we are not asking for the accountability from the serving people who are living who are sitting in office you know it's something like saying we are asking attendance from all the students in the school but not asking the attendance from the teachers you know not asking the attendance from the education systemic bureaucrats you know how can that be possible you know it's very important and and also without providing infrastructure it's something like saying that i have a meeting in adis ababa but there is no road to adis ababa you know how can that be possible how can we make a policy blind as blind as that one so it's very important that data which is the final manifestation of the identity of a people or a activity is which is driven by digital infrastructure in participation of the grassroots people people at large and all kind you know india has got more than 80% people communicating oral you know so it's very important that we also take uh, them into example we have 5% tribal people who live in remote areas have we talked to them how can we talk to them how do you solve them how do you provide access to them so these are just few examples but what i would say in that when we are in the era of digital pervasiveness we are at the era where everything is being seen as data it is very important that the datafication the digitalization is done with lot of humanization with lot of human touch rather than a consumeristic touch you know we must consider our population as a citizen and not as just a consumer because approach of data pal- policy is very consumeristic we cannot do that you know and the consumers also have a very strong responsibility not to accept anything and everything that is made for them that is very consumeristic approach from the citizens also so we also as a citizen have a responsibility thank you thank you osama vinita Uh, Vinita, are you I there? Agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree totally with the larger point that uh, Osama made. That uh, I can't emphasize enough that policies have to be made for our citizens and not considering them as consumers. But just to highlight some recommendation that emerged from our study, specific recommendations. Design system should be designed spe- specifically keeping in mind all these constituencies that uh, Osama mentioned, especially elderly. digitally literate and textually literate as he mentioned uh, people who uh, are mo- uh, more uh, often uh, uh, resorted to oral way of communicating so that we don't exclude them or more importantly don't strip them of their independence they are independent we are just making them dependent by designing the systems in exclusionary manner then again uh, this point is also very important make tech more local by incorporating uh, local languages not just tech but as, as the story with the person is not able to understand what is being written about him because it is uh, written in english 
the journalist has a responsibility to send at least the gist of what is written uh, to the local language and why are most of the otps only comes in english this is some a question for the software designers and i don't know if anybody is in the audience or if anybody will watch later and overall i would like to conclude by saying that state has to take more responsibility for abiding by the fundamental data principles which are also the fundamental duty the state has to fulfill to its citizens thank you thank you so much i mean you both have mentioned about how data has to be contextually informed uh, from the ground uh, i mean uh, the digitization has to be contextually informed from the ground and that how these decisions needs to be more participatory and then there has to be uh, you know more interaction with the policy makers uh, the developers and the people who are uh, uh, you know impacted by uh, these processes uh, i would like to ask the audience online and offline if they have any questions uh, online audience if you have any question you can just post it on the chat box i'll read it out uh, on site uh, if anybody has any questions i can take them too Uh, Radhika has a question. I'll just pass on the mic to her. Thank you. Um, Osama mentioned meaningful connectivity. You know, I'm very confused about the definition. So it's a very simple, or uh, you might also say a stupid question. But could you explain what meaningful connectivity actually is? Osama. <coughs> so i will uh, yeah so uh, radhika i will i will explain meaningful connectivity by reversely asking you that if you look at your mobile and you may have a 2g connection or a 1g connection or a edge connection you might be buffering most of the time uh, and you may not be able to do transaction that's that's more from the bandwidth perspective so you are you are connected technically you are connected but you are not able to do any transaction or any meaningful transaction similarly if your bandwidth is not enough to do a video call for your teacher or your student for education purpose or download uh, uh, you know appropriate file the third is that you may not have a device only to do uh, any meaningful activity according to the requirement for example nre ga workers the typical labor workers who are being asked by the government to mark their attendance on an app which runs only on Uh, android phone which is a smartphone with a certain level of bandwidth and connectivity if that connectivity doesn't work and they don't have machine all together they are seen as absent and therefore they are loss of wages and they are not marked attendance so that's that's called meaningful connectivity and meaningful um, uh, i mean that's the definition of meaningful connectivity if you go to uh, a website i will i will tell you uh, there are four five that appropriate hardware and device appropriate level of connectivity appropriate level of digital literacy and uh, awareness about how do you use that and uh, therefore and it's transactional and so on and so forth so that's what the uh, real one but the but but the very layman is that if you can't do your work even being connected you are not connected thank you so much asama uh, if we don't have any questions i think uh, we don't have enough time to take more questions uh, no online questions either uh, that is it thank you so much everyone for thank coming and thank you uh online virtual uh speakers for being here thank you for taking the taking the responsibility on the spot and on the ground thank you thank you jenny thank you thank you everyone